Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily video update for July 17th, 2024. As I'm sure most of you are aware, events seem to be flying by with uh, new developments every day, and sometimes it's hard to make sense of where they're coming from and where things are going. The situation can be mind-boggling in some ways. Are, are we heading into World War III? Do we have any leadership in the West that can shift the direction? Uh, what is the likelihood that we could have an accidental war that could trigger nuclear attacks? These are, these are things that are real. And you add to that the effect of the assassination attempt against Donald Trump, which introduces a whole new uh, area of discussion, <clears throat> much of it based on gossip. You know, was there a second shooter or a third shooter? Who's responsible? Was it the Chinese communists? Was it the Antifa? The mind gets cloudy. And then on top of that, you look at the, the multiplicity of crises. You've got inflation. You've got the green transformation, which is destroying nations. You've got deindustrialization, exploding debt, and a, a, with the exploding debt and high interest rates, it's an exploding debt service as well. Uh, the infrastructure collapse. And on top of this now, we're hearing talk of record levels of the stock markets, but what does that imply? A bubble? Does that mean it's going to pop? And so some of you are thinking, I should get in it while it's still going up. How do I make a profit now? And that's how people usually get stuck with huge losses. So we're at a, clearly at a moment of reckoning for the West, but there's one area where people are not thinking too well. And I, I brought up the stock market bubble for a specific reason. The question comes up of where is the economy? What's happening with the U.S. economy? And is spending for war going to help the economy? Because that's what people around Biden are basically saying, that the war spending means more jobs. This is what's being presented in Europe, the idea that putting more money into NATO is actually good for the economy. And imbeciles like Lindsey Graham say that for the United States. Look at the bonus we're getting. Russians are getting killed and we're spending money that ends up coming back to the United States and, and jobs in the United States. A perfect situation. Well, it's only perfect if you're a delusional fool like Lindsey Graham. But there's another factor here that we have to look at, which is the discussion that maybe we should disengage from the war with Russia, get a settlement with Russia over Ukraine so we can prepare for taking on China over Taiwan. Now, some of the same delusional fools who told you that the United States support for Ukraine would mean Ukraine could beat Russia. Some of those same people are saying the Chinese economy is collapsing. It expanded too quickly. It's building ghost cities. It's producing too much. The debt is going to collapse it. That's really interesting talking about the debt of China when the U.S. government debt is officially over $35 trillion now, and it's nearly matched by corporate debt and private sector debt, which I'll get to in a moment. But the, the question that, that comes up then is what's going on with China and what's going on with the rest of the world? Now, as we're moving toward an economic implosion in the West, we're seeing the decisions being made that there has to be more pressure on nations of the global south to provide more cheap goods and cheap labor. Well, that's not going to work. The global south is moving away from the imperial uh, servants, being the imperial servants of the Western powers. There's IMF austerity, the International Monetary Fund, dictating economic policy to countries, basically saying you can't spend your money on things that your people need because they have to go to paying debt. Well, look how well that works. Did you follow what just happened in Kenya? Deadly riots of young people against a pro-Western government. Then the line that there's only one model, that countries have no choice 
but to go with the Western neoliberal model. And what are they saying about that? Take your Western neoliberal model and shove it. We have an option now of Russia and China and the BRICS. And this represents a very significant break, a total change. The Global South is moving away, saying they're no longer going to be subservient to the single model of the unipolar order. And this is spearheaded by the BRICS and especially the Belt and Road Initiative. And so what's being said now to try and counter that is, oh, don't worry about China. China's about to collapse. China has a real estate problem. They've got a debt problem. They've got overproduction. Don't worry about China. We'll hit them with tariffs and they'll, it'll bring them into line. Now, this is a total, totally fake narrative. They, they were being told there's a real estate collapse. Well, in fact, what happened is the Chinese government did the smart thing. They're starting to put the real estate mortgage companies through bankruptcy. And in some cases, putting the bankers who did this in prison. They're cleaning it up. We're told the other problem with China is government subsidies, that the reason they can sell goods around the world is because the government subsidized their exports. Well, what about the United States? Look at all the subsidies that go to the green policy. In Germany, the main reason any kind of green technology is being implemented is because the old reliable energy systems are being shut down. The Nord Stream pipeline was blown up and there are huge subsidies for people going solar and with warm uh, heat pumps. So what, what's the reality here with China? Let, let's get a, a check with reality. China last month had a record trade surplus of $99 billion. That's a record for China. And it shows that people still want Chinese goods. The exports last year of manufactured goods from China was $3.38 trillion. That's manufactured goods. That means, in some cases, heavy industry, capital goods, and so on. There's a huge market for those goods uh, from China. Then the industrial loans made in China in the fourth quarter, uh, ending in March uh, 2024, new bank loans to industrial borrowers were $614 billion. So that means they're generating credit to increase the, the technological capacity of the economy, which improves the productivity. Now, the New York Times, in reporting this, was forced to admit that lending to industry in China has almost exactly replaced the loans that previously went to the real estate sector. In other words, they're shutting down real estate speculation and replacing it with investment in physical goods production. Now that's in contrast to the United States, where we are seeing the commercial real estate bubble popping with rising delinquencies and defaults. And this triggers higher uh, financial or tighter financial conditions. That means there's not as much credit available for the commercial market. Falling commercial real estate prices and losses for the banks. Now, in that context, you can see the looming stock market bubble blowing out in the United States. On top of that, there's uncertainty in bond markets. And so what you have is the BRICS model, and this is what the Russians are doing as well, investment in physical goods infrastructure to increase the productivity of the labor force, borrowing to increase the future productivity, and the West is borrowing to avoid default. And all that does is create more debt. So you have on the one side physical value being produced, the other side you have paper and debt. So those people who are pushing the Western model need to take a more serious look at what they're doing. And those people who live under that, we're in a very dangerous situation. And that's why people have to start studying LaRouche's approach to economics. I'll have some links for you. We'll discuss this more again tomorrow. But keep in mind, when you hear something against China, it's coming from people who are unable to compete 
with what they're doing in China. And instead of joining with them, instead of following the, what they're doing, because what they're doing is what we used to do. Loans for physical goods production. So when you hear the siren song of we've got to counter their attempt to take over Taiwan, it's another war push coming from the failed economic model of the West. So thanks for joining me. See you again tomorrow. The big question, what can we do about it? If we have the power to influence the course of history, as individuals, then each of us has a corresponding moral responsibility to muster for within ourselves those capacities which enable us to do our part in shaping the course of civilization. Now, under that rubric, I say, what kind of news is newsworthy? The only news that's worth having is news which performs those functions, which enables governments, which enables you as an individual and so forth, better to understand what is happening to this planet, to understand what the developments are that are shaping the course of history, and finally to indicate to you the facts which you need to look at so that you can judge what it is that you might be able to do which can contribute to bringing about a solution, an escape from the collapse of civilization. This is no pipe dream, this is no fantasy, this is real.